So if you count the beads in these strings, you can figure out exactly how many days that tooth has been growing. When Chris looked at the fossilized teeth of Turkanaboy, he got a huge surprise. Turkanaboy wasn't 14 years old, he was eight. What that implies is that the growth of the Turkana boy resembled more closely that of chimpanzees today. To be five foot three at age eight, Turkana boy must have grown up very fast, at a rate closer to chimps than us. A chimpanzee's childhood is short. It is sexually mature at about seven. Human childhood is longer. We reach puberty at about 12. So as humans evolved from apes, childhood was extended. But what advantage could be gained by having helpless children around to feed and care for who take so long to grow up? The mystery of prolonged childhood is at the heart of human evolution. It may be related to brain size. We humans have the biggest brains in the animal kingdom in relation to our body size. They're so big that most of our brain growth has to happen outside the womb, or our heads would never get through the birth canal. A long, slow childhood gives our brains time to grow after birth, and time to learn everything we need to function in our complex human societies. That's the advantage of prolonged childhood, for us at least. But what about Turkana boy? His brain was 900 cubic centimeters, smaller than ours, but more than twice as large as a chimp's. So was he on the way to thinking and talking like us? Ralph Holloway believes he was. He's been collecting the brain endocasts of human ancestors for over 30 years. An endocast is a mold taken from the inside of the skull, which reveals the shape of the brain. Ralph is particularly interested in something called the Broca's area. Broca's area is involved with memory functions, executive functions, but it does have a very important role to play in the motor aspects of speech. In the brain of Turkana boy, Ralph believes he sees evidence for something remarkable, a change in the Broca's area tied to communication. Broca's caps regions on the Turkana boy are fully modern in terms of their appearance. It is good, solid evidence for the, having the ability of symbolic communication. In other words, language. It's a controversial idea and we'll never know for sure if Turkana boy could speak. But there are other clues to his intelligence, the stone tools he left behind. We are born hardwired with an awareness of the intentions and emotions of others, which is unique in the animal world. When did humans develop this gift for attributing mental states and feelings to others and for caring about what others thought about them? Could these social instincts have developed with Homo erectus, along with cooperative hunting, bigger brains, longer childhoods, and the use of fire? Perhaps Turkana boy and his people already had social skills that would be familiar to us. Here were intelligent social beings with an increasing capacity for cooperation. It may be this that made possible another great achievement, the exodus from Africa. 5,000 miles from Africa, the island of Flores, Indonesia. In 2003, researchers made a discovery so strange, nobody knew what to make of it. They found the bones of a tiny human ancestor, just over three feet tall, even smaller than the Dimenisi fossils. They called this baffling new ancestor Homo floresiensis, 
and because of its tiny size, Nick named it the Hobbit. This has created a tremendous amount of grief because we're not really sure of what we're seeing here. Uh, the size of the Hobbit brain endocast is roughly 400 cc's. That's barely bigger than the brain of Lucy, the famous bipedal ape from three million years ago. It's not just a small brain and a primitive looking face, but the foot's primitive, the hand's primitive, the leg is primitive. The lower limb is very much like the Lucy skeleton. That was a big surprise. And in the cave where this primitive creature was found, they also uncovered stone tools, something Lucy never had. People have for a long time said, well, you need a big brain to make stone tools. Uh, well, OK, if Homo floresiensis is making stone tools, this creature has a brain the size of an orange. Clearly, that equation's gone. Everything about these creatures is an enigma. Where did they come from, and what were they? Some researchers have argued that Floresiensis is just a dwarfed population of modern people that suffered some kind of disease that caused them to both dwarf and have relatively small brains. But when scientists took a closer look, most saw no evidence of disease. The stone tools and the shape of the face moved the focus to our old friend, Homo erectus. Some researchers think that Homo floresiensis evolved from Homo erectus. But how did they get so small? Something called island dwarfism may be the answer. Isolated on islands with limited food, large mammals sometimes shrink over time. On Flores, there were once pygmy elephants the size of cows. Could the same evolutionary pressure have acted on Homo erectus to produce the hobbit? Or was this mysterious creature descended from an even more primitive ancestor? So perhaps we're sampling a period which is at the very beginning of the Homo lineage. So whatever the hobbit was, perhaps its ancestors were the very first wave of migration out of Africa some unknown creature, part bipedal ape like Lucy and part Homo erectus. So if that's the case, then what we see in Indonesia makes sense. It's kind of a body that existed before human bodies became more modern. For almost two million years, his bones were preserved by the Earth. Their discovery opened a window for us on an unknown world. The world of the most successful human ancestor of all time, Homo erectus. They've revealed to us that mysterious moment when almost everything human was born. Our bodies, our minds, our emotions. Think of all we've become. Trace the threads of our origins through the ancestors who went before. They all lead back to Turkana Boy and his kind, the first humans. <laughs>